This is a broadcast from the Fort Line Baptist Church. Good morning. This is the time of praise and worship when we can all lift our hands and lift our voices in praises to the Most High God. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. Sing along with me as we worship God together.
of God has been extra good to us and because of God's goodness we have a right to give him praise, honor and glory because someone declared that a reflected praise is a perfected praise. So right where you are, lift your hands and let's give God a praise. Everything that has breath. I said everything that has breath. Yes, we thank God, amen, for the beautiful praise and worship that came from Evangelist Samus, Alicia, amen. She can truly sing because God has anointed her to sing. Now, just for a short while, to all of you members of Forsyth Baptist Church and viewing audience, wherever you are, come on and go with me in the Word of God. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm reading in your hearing two passages the first one found in second first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 and the second one is found over in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 reading verses 22 through verse 24 amen our first passage first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now over in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and reading verses 22 through verse 24. But ye have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. And this morning, just for a short while, I want to speak to you on the thought, man was made for two worlds. Man was made for two worlds, or the threefold nature of man. Let us bow our heads. Eternal Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, I honor, bless, and praise you for this, another chance, an opportunity to stand before the people of God and to share a word with them from your word. I ask that your word will go forth with clarity, power and conviction that lives will be challenged and saved for the honor and the glory of God in Jesus name amen and amen this morning we are looking at the book of first Thessalonians we understand that the apostle Paul was the author of this book Paul writing to the church of the Thessalonians, amen, encouraged them to serve the Lord because Jesus is soon to come. And if you would notice here, he encouraged them because a lot of the saints was dying out and they asked Paul questions concerning the resurrection, asked Paul questions concerning what will happen to an individual if he died in the Lord. And so when we look at Paul first, letter to the church at Thessalonica, you would notice that in every chapter, the first ch uh, five chapters of First Thessalonians, every chapter, Paul points out to them the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For instance, if you would go with me to chapter 1 and verse 10, you would notice that Paul encouraged them, he says in verse 10, to wait for his son, amen, from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. So in the first chapter we see Paul telling them about the coming of the Lord. Then in the second chapter if you would go to verse 19 you would notice that Paul gave them a hope again about the second coming of the Lord. He says in verse 19 for what is our hope 
or our joy or our crown of rejoicing are not even we in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. So you see again in the second chapter he talks about the coming of the Lord. Now go with me to the third chapter and I'm reading verse 13 in your hearing. He says to the end he may establish your hearts unbelievable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all of his saints. And then over in the fourth chapter, he talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ again. But this coming refers to the rapture of the church. Notice in verse 16 of the fourth chapter, he says, for the word for, for, for the Lord himself shall the Send from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then Paul says in verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So I'm here to let you know that you need to be encouraged at what you see happening around the world, all of this point to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I don't know if it will be the night or maybe next week or whatever, but we are looking forward to the rapture of the church when Jesus Christ will come and take all the saints out of this world and we will find ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Now as we zero in and look at our text, we will notice here that Paul now is about to share with us, amen, the twofold nature of man. A man was made for two worlds, or the threefold nature of man. Man was made for two worlds, hallelujah, or the threefold nature of man. When you think about it, the Bible let us know that there are three worlds. There are three worlds. Two of the worlds are unseen and the one we are living in is the seen world. For instance, if you would go with me over in the book of Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 9 through 11. This has to do with after Jesus was raised from the dead and went back to heaven. Listen what he says in verse 9. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he told us about the three worlds. Hallelujah. The world that we live in then we talked about heaven that we cannot see and hell that we cannot see. And also, amen, man is a tripartite. Man is made up of three parts. Two of the parts of man is unseen and one is seen. The only thing you can see amen, is my body. But I want you to know that I am a three-part individual. I am made up of body, soul, and spirit. Yes, sir. But these three amen, are complete in itself because man is a triumph being. Now as we zero into this, we need to see one or two points from the word of God. Let us now consider man's relation to the spirit world. Man in his physical and spiritual makeup was made for two worlds. Hallelujah. He was made for two worlds. To live in this flesh. To live in this world. And the reason why you can live in this world because you have a body. Amen. And the body keep you attached to this world. Uh, but there is the spirit world. And amen. You can have access and we can have relationship with the spirit world while we're living in the flesh. But the good thing about it, the time will come when you will die. And the Bible let us know that the body will go back to the dust but your soul 
soul and spirit will live on. Someone declare, you trying to tell me, Rev, that when my body goes to the dust, that there's something inside of me will live on? Yes, the real you will live on. Because remember now, man is a trinity. He's made up of spirit, soul, and body. I put it to you like this. Man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. You said, now hold it, Rev. You have to prove that to me. Amen. That man is three parts. So for instance, when we think about it, when we think about our physical makeup, we would notice that you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. And so just looking at it, the Bible let us know in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, that God formed man body from the dust of the earth. And then the scripture declares that God breathed into man's nostril the breath of life. Now here, theologians use a word that, amen, we can go along with because we can understand, amen, from the physical point of view, but in reality, no one knows how God breathed into man's nostril. And so they give us something that we can understand and they call it an anthropomorphic term, indicating that you can understand it like God, amen, filling up his, his lungs with air and then breathing it out into that man and that man became a living soul but in reality God breathed a part of himself into that man and so man became a living soul body, soul and spirit now we need to notice also from the word of God that man, hallelujah uh, he, he caters to this physical earth hallelujah, in fact he is dealing with but five senses sight and smelling and hearing and tasting and touching that's the five senses that deals with this physical world but man also has a soul and his soul is made up bless God of his mind his will and his emotion and his conscience. These make up, amen, his personality. And so the word of God let us know, amen, quite clear that man has a soul. Then he talks about man's spirit. The Bible let us know over in the book of Job. If you can, turn your Bibles with me to Job chapter 32. In Job chapter 32, and reading in your hearing verse 8 of Job chapter 32 and you would notice here that Job three friends came to him and they began to console him but rather than consoling Job they brought him down they bring him down they let him know he had sinned against God that's why he's experiencing all of this problem and the Bible let us know that Job nephew L-I-U amen he was there also standing by. He says here in verse 8, there is a spirit in man. See? So man has a spirit. Glory to God. And so we see the three parts of man. Spirit, soul, and body. Now what happens to an individual amen, when he dies? When he or she dies, the body goes back to the dust. But the soul and the spirit lives on. You said, now Rev, you have to prove that the soul and spirit lives on. If you would go with me to a passage found in the book of Revelation, and read in Revelation chapter 6 beginning at verse 9 let's indicate here that the soul and the spirit lives on. Listen to it from the word of God. And when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does not thou judge and avenge our blood on them that live on the earth? They was conscious, hallelujah, that they came from the earth. Which indicates 
case that when you die, it's not over. That's why you need to make sure, make Jesus your choice. Because when an individual dies, glory to God, his body goes back to the earth, but his soul and spirit goes someplace else. Now the Bible let us know over in the book of Luke that there are two different compartments and this is called place, amen, under the dispensation of promise, amen, when man, when they died, they would go to a certain place and the Bible talked to us about the unseen world or, amen, it is called in Hebrew, Sheol or in the Greek, it is called Hades, which means the unseen world of the pilot spirit, but when they leave here, they go Amen. Either to a place of comfort, which is called Abraham's bosom, or paradise. And then the other part is called the torment department. It was separated by a great gulf. And the word of God let us know, hallelujah, over in the book of St. Luke, that this rich man, I want to just read it for you. St. Luke chapter 16, beginning at verse. Hallelujah 19. Luke chapter 16, beginning at verse 19. And it reads thus. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. Isn't that good news that when a believer dies, how the angels come to escort that individual to his place of abode? It also went on to say, bless God, but the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham of Pharaoh and Lazarus in his bosom. Remember, the rich man was buried. His body was buried, but his soul and spirit lives on. I'm here to let you know, neighbors and friends, it's no time to play with your life. Too much people are dying from this virus around the world, but I'm praying that the behemoth people, amen, experience God as their personal Savior and really follow protocol and listen to our Prime Minister. Wear your mask, glory to God. Stay six feet apart and do what is asked of you. And I believe we will be preserved and God will bring us out of this. I don't know about you, but I feel like giving God some praise right here because this too shall pass. Yes, was dying on the cross that there were two thieves, one on the right and the other on the left, and one of them said to him, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. Jesus said unto him, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now question, question, when Jesus gave up the ghost, where did he went? Hallelujah. I'm glad you asked. When Jesus gave up the ghost, where did he went? According to 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm reading verse 18 in your hearing. 1 Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 18. For Christ also at once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but alive the spirit by which also he went and preached under the spirits in prison when Jesus died on the cross and he went down into hell I heard the psalmist declaring in Psalms 24 lift up your heads O ye gates and be lifted up you everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in the king keep on asking question who is the king of glory Jesus declared the Lord
where you are, if you're not born again, if you're not saved, this is a good time to give your heart to the Lord. Bow with me in the word of prayer, eternal Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to present the Bahamas before you. I ask, oh God, that you would save the unsaved in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring back the backsliders and set the captive free. Now, Lord, I pray for the Bahamian people. I pray for our prime minister and his wife. I pray for the opposition leaders and their family. I pray, Lord God, for the Bahamian people in general. Lord, that you would nip this virus at the blood. That no other souls will die from it in the Bahamas. And God, we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you not now only, but forever.